Hey, welcome to a foreigner in the Philippines. Well, it's a late night job for me. Uh, one of the things that uh, I'm very much aware of that is, is coming up now, because of the pandemic, I understand that uh, the suicides are up. Um, it's not exactly a, a feel-good subject, but there are people who um, in the pandemic and the quarantine situations, especially older people, who are pretty well trapped inside their, what may be just a single room. Um, and it gets to be a pretty rough kind of life. We actually spoke to relatives of ours uh, who, they are in-laws, and they were talking about their daughter and her husband who are now stuck in Cebu and and get to be allowed out <laughs> very little and they're living in their little place uh, under quarantine and they're ordering their food out from online restaurants apparently that's, that's the situation it would be pretty rough actually um, in our own case we're not we're not confined in the same kind of way um, it's uh, it's not for us. It's actually not such a bad life. We're still managing to do our work, not to the same extent, but we are getting things done. So there's still some sense of uh, being useful to the society, some sense of fulfilment. We're still managing to do that. Well, something happened tonight that uh, that uh, gave me. Um, pause to think about something that my my uh, my parents always used to tell me in the north of England in um, uh, in what seems like uh, um, a hundred years ago <laughs> and um, that's what we will be getting up towards uh, soon enough but anyway if ever we pretended as kids to be hurt or um, have fallen or anything like that. My mother always used to say, ah, remember the boy who cried wolf? Well in the Philippines they don't seem to have heard of this story which once you've heard it uh, all that you have to do is say remember the boy that cried wolf and the story of course is that uh, the shepherd boy out on the, on the hills outside of his village decided that uh, life was getting very boring just watching the sheep so he decided that he would run into town shouting wolf wolf that there was a wolf endangering the sheep and the villagers all rushed out to help protect the flock from the from the wolf and then when they got there, the boy with a laugh said, Ah, fooled you. It, one of, it was one of the early prank videos, uh, prank um, situations. So he played a trick on them. So um, uh, they were mildly amused and annoyed, but they went home. A little while later, uh, he decided that he played the same thing again. And he ran into town crying, Wolf, wolf. And they said, Are you sure? And he said, absolutely, and they ran to help protect him and his flock from the wolf, which they found out was non-existent. Well, of course, come the time when the wolf actually does come, and he ran into town crying, saying, wolf, wolf, and everybody said, oh, sure, we know all about that. And they didn't respond, and the wolf killed a lot of sheep. So in other words, you don't try to raise the alarm on something unless it, it's real. I remember going into, uh, when I went swimming, when I went swimming, one of the things that we were told is don't pretend to be in trouble. Don't raise your arm when you're in the deep end and say, help, help, because people will have to take it seriously. Now I even have with Beth, sometimes she'll play a joke 
and she'll pretend that she's uh, fallen or something and she's lying on the ground and she'll be doing um, an Academy Award winning uh, performance and I say to her don't do that because how will I ever know if you, especially if you've done a really good acting job how will I ever know that you are not injured or are injured so I think we've got that sorted out now well touching on the suicide thing again when when someone says that they're going to commit suicide it's not something that can be a prank it, it can't be a prank try going to the airport especially in Cebu now where they clearly have what the penalties are for pretending that you have a, blo a bomb in your suitcase you know when danger first started to threaten in this particular way there were still people going to the airport and uh, saying oh yeah uh, have you got anything to, to declare well I do have a small bomb in the, in the blue suitcase now it's not a joke it's never a joke and if you from what I remember in Cebu if you pretend that you may well be banned from actually coming back to the Philippines that the the penalties are really severe and so they should be because otherwise how can anybody know whether a danger being threatened is serious or not so any danger is a danger that's taken seriously well we heard tonight about a kid who had said that uh, he was going to commit suicide. He, he was tired of living, he had his excuses um, and he posted it online and said that when his family were all in bed and in the middle of the night he was going to take his own life. Of course every adult that heard this because one of the kids that knew him gave that information out it had to be taken seriously and so and so it was now by contacting other adults who could get hold of this kid because out here um, people live in quite isolated situations uh, locations and uh, for instance there are some there are literally some people who after dark we would find it extremely difficult to be able to contact them if they're not online they're, it's almost as if they're not in the planet on the planet so it was eventually found out that this was a prank there is no there is no such thing as a prank on this subject and so when when anything like this comes up especially if it's someone that you really care about who in a moment of foolishness may have thought this was funny you have to take it seriously and, uh, and that's a lesson that should be learned by all a little while ago someone uh, uh, a subscriber uh, sent a, a message to me and asked if I would support suicide awareness and I agree that it is a subject which is being actually swept under the table in a way uh, swept under the carpet I should say and and we should be aware that right now there may be people who are in a desperate attitude and they need they need support so it can't hurt can it to check up on people who you know are living alone um, this is one of those where there's uh, there's the law there's God's law there's um, different pressures which are on us to do our part as good human beings as uh, 
compassionate people, good neighbours. It can't hurt to check up on people who are living alone and maybe in a, an extremely wretched kind of existence and be prone to thinking that, well, anything would be better than this. No, life is sacred and it should always be treated that way and anybody who does get down enough to consider otherwise is deserving of our help. Thanks for looking in. Uh, not um, a cheery, happy <laughs> um, subject, but it's an important one, I think. So bye for now.